I love racing because it's like it's just a whole different atmosphere compared to normal life at home and everything. And obviously, travelling around the country, it's like a holiday every weekend, and it's obviously really nice. And you've got all different friends there, and they've all been they all know you really, really good compared to other friends. And it's just really nice to have people supporting you and people understanding that that what you're going through and people that understand you compared to other people outside of racing like it's a whole 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 different atmosphere and it's obviously really 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 good um, and good 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 sport I'm Hudson Cooper and I won the Ovali 110 Cup for 2022. I got into racing because I, were, I started on like trials biking and we wanted to I always watched MotoGP and stuff like that, so I always wanted to go up that route and um, and eventually get there. But at the start, we um, started trials biking, um, and we like I don't yeah we just started trials biking and always started there. That's where we started. It began with me with Hudson. Uh, obviously, I've had an interest in bikes. Not that I was. An amazing bike rider myself. Um, obviously, it's rubbed off on him. Uh, thinking bike, wow. So I've always had uh, motorbikes. When uh, my wife was pregnant with uh, Hudson, I actually had an R6 bike, um, and I decided to get rid of that bike when she was pregnant with him. Um, obviously, riding on the roads is a bit of a risky business. And I'm not saying that I forced it upon Hudson, really. It's a strange one. Uh, we just uh, always had bikes. I can always remember me... Um, I don't know if you've talked about this already, so we were basically at the retail park and uh, there were a little ride on electric bike that were like a 12-volt bike. Um, and we were just... I think I were up there actually buying some, like, DJ and stuff. And uh, Hudson were like walking around with me. He must have been like two years old. And uh, there was this ride on bike and we pulled it down. And uh, I pressed the button on it and it, it was still charged up. So I like, oh, get on it, mate. So like, it, were, like, two, it must have been two. I'm, I'm sure I've still got the video footage. Like jumped on it and he like rode through the shop up and down one of the, the aisles. I think it was like Tandy or Electronics Booty. I forgot what name of company were. Anyway, so he rode up and down there. And I sent a video to Tony, like saying, look at him on this bike here. So he had like stabilizers. Um, that to me is like, felt like, like the a turning point. <laughs> I don't know if it were a turning point, just like the start. He got that bike. We went out loads on that bike around Rother Valley where we live. I mean, like this bike went like two miles an hour, but he loved it. I got him like a little motocross helmet for it. Got him some motocross gear, uh, postman pat, <laughs> knee sliders. Uh, that we had for his push bike uh, and he really really like enjoyed buzzing around on that and th that that was like the start really. Um, six years old when I started that where I got my trials bike um, and from there on we started trials biking and then we I can remember being in the living room and like making little simulators with like little toys and stuff like that and having MotoGP and sitting in front of the telly and always doing that. We used to go like in the woods and like just like as a as a have a raz about in the woods and like all my dad's friends they all they all used to go on the push bikes and they always used to take like one battery and put it in the backpack so we could stop out the full day and just have a raz about and have fun. My first power bike was like <laughs> we were we were um I think we were gonna get some security cameras um, and we were we went into this like shop and it were all like electronics and stuff. And at the back of the shop on one of the shelves it had a um like a little like twelve volt toy, like little bike 
um, with like stabilizers on and stuff, and like a little motorbike, and we got it down. And my dad said, "Jump on it," and I was I started riding it around the shop. And then that that day, my dad bought it and stuck it in. I think, yeah, he bought it there. And then for Christmas, I got it then, and it would it was like a little twelve volt twelve like volt toy, and it had like a little button on handlebars, and you just, I it barely used to get round our um, local park, but that was like my first bike, um, like powered bike. Yeah, I had that, and then on the up up in our loft, we had um, these little petrol mini motos, and we sit, we tried them on on the road, um, and we did like a couple couple um, lengths up and down road and then my dad I think for my s uh, fifth birthday or sixth um, we got a little electric mini moto and um, my dad sprayed it um, like in Mark Marquez Repsol colours so it looked proper proper good um, and then we used to just like razz around on the road and stuff like that and it had road tyres on it so we couldn't go off road with that I don't think we ever went off road with that um, but we used to razz about on, ro on like set cones up on road and do like races and stuff like that. And then after that, we obviously got my Osset, and that was like the first. Oh no, sorry. Before my before my mini moto, we got I got I got a quad. So this this weren't like a toy. This is like proper quad, um, electric quad, and that was like the first time we went like off road um and stuff like that so it was like a little little quad like a like 50 like 50 50 cc size um and it were it was pretty good and we used to go out on that and then obviously we got that mini moto and stuff um and then we got my osset for i think my seventh birthday and um, we got my osset and then we went out on that and that was so much more like talky and powerful compared to that little mini moto um, and I, I love that. What got me into racing is the fact that like you always, I'm quite a competitive person and like always trying to beat everyone and just like, I just liked racing and been having a rank compared to other people and then just not, just being yourself, just like I've, I like to compare to myself to other people, if you know what I mean. Um, but that's, that's what I liked about racing. But it like, Kind of just started because obviously we, we used to watch MotoGP and that and we did trials biking just for fun and then we started entering competitions and I was getting top top threes, top fives, just I was doing, doing um, good at that. And then I, I just said to my dad one, one day, I'd, I want to race. I don't want to, I don't want to be going slow through woods. I want to race people fast and we, we, um, we went to we went to go try some leathers on, and as as we were trying the leathers on, my, the people I didn't know this at the time, but the people who we went to go try them on for, um, they they my dad bought them off them, and then we went to um, I forgot I forgot the name of the track. It was um, any, anyway. I'm sorry I can't remember. Um, but but went there and. We, I, I had my little osset, and we were like, "Well, can, can we go on track with the osset?" And the guy, the guy there said, "Well, as long as you've got leathers, you can go on track." So, obviously, we stuck my leathers on, went on track, and that was like my first time on track. A bit, it were a bit too big of a track to say or on a little, um, little, little osset. Um, but that's like where we kind of started, and then. At Christmas, we bought a SM90 110, um, not 110, um, a 1010, and that's how we started. We got into Avali stuff because, like, that was like the next steps from the 90, and obviously, I came third in the 90s, um, and I think I did two, yeah, two years in the 90s, and like my first year was just like kind of getting used to it, and then in the second year, obviously, a bit more competitive, getting higher. Um, higher and higher in the rankings and then it just like it was just like we um we we were hiring um arnie cars bike for the winter series um and we did some test days and stuff and that and obviously i were getting used to the ovalis and then 
it was just like kind of the next step and it just came on like that and at, um, I think it were Christmas and I think we got the Ovali then. Well, the Ovalis, they, they handle really nicely um, compared to the 90s, obviously. And um, obviously a lot more talk here and stuff. So it was just kind of cool being in, like racing a GP bike compared to racing a pit bike. And I it just like, like when I first got it, it was just like a mini motor GP bike. Like our, it just looks amazing. Thinking about the Ovalis and what the how the Ovalis come into the sport. So when we first started this championship or started racing, that there was um, that didn't exist. The mini GPs weren't really a thing. The Ovalis certainly weren't a thing. Uh, and we've everybody when we first started, we thought that uh, the Supermoto Night is you probably stick a one forty engine in this Supermoto and you could race that until you're sixteen year old. On the flip side of that, how it's all sealed engines, everybody's on the same bike, you can't modify them, uh, the best rider basically wins. I think that's a positive step. Like the Ovalis and the Mini GP World Championship, like they are heading in a, a direction that you, you've got to admire, that you think there's riders from all the way around the world, like 32 riders from all the way around the, country, like the world, that's amazing. It's a step in the right direction. Hopefully everybody's pushing towards that. That's something that Utton wants to inspire to get to eventually. Um, getting to them world finals would be amazing. That's another target that he'd like to do. But I think it's a positive thing. And Pete's putting that in place a little bit because that weren't there for him. There was That weren't there for him. He was like, he was mini moto riding. I don't even, there were no mini GP bikes. I don't even think... Pete, I don't know if Pete come into it late, but there were none of that for Pete either. So he's trying to put things in place that makes it better for the kids of today, which I think is a positive step. Like Pete Rittman is, is obviously the importer for the UK, um, and obviously he's got he comes he comes to some of the rounds and sometimes helps riders, and he's just generally helping and doing some of the socials, and obviously. He's um, got his own um, business um, and that helps a lot as well. Yeah, I went down to Peter Inman's because we went to go drop the bike off and then whilst we were there, we got a tour of the workshop and everything um, and we've seen some really cool bikes and stuff. And then um, we did a podcast, which you can go check out on my channel. Um, and we, yeah, we did a podcast and interview um, and it was really good. Um, yeah, we dropped his bike off and then we went to Motorcycle Live um, and my bike was on, on his stand with my helmet and stuff on the stand and that um, and that was really good as well. So that's, um, yeah, we run our super bikes on there, don't we? So all the FHO super bikes. Oh, well, you bring them through here, yeah? Yeah. So we're doing full engine tune on them, so the Super Sport tune. They're both trying for 765s. Um, They've had adjusters put in the back so that they can change the rear wheel really fast. Dash on it. Not much of a big is it really? Get his phone up and text him say where you get it from or whatever. Nice. Think about service one. What are they doing? It's probably a different mapping mode as well. Yeah. Ah. Maybe a pit limiter. Yeah. Yeah. Can imagine that. You'll be able to change modes on there so you don't have to touch it, you can just go around there and you can flick through double that like wet mode. Yeah. There'll be fuel save mode. Yeah. Have a clutch. Oh. Yeah, that's clutch. That's great. I don't know. Yeah, down. Mm. But you're only to use that. Yeah, no, you that me. It's the first time on there, do you know what I mean? So he was uh and then this is actually going to be my test bike, if you like, for okay. Super Sport, um, for the TT. All so right, cool. It's the same spec as what I'm going to race at the TT in 2022, wow. 2023 even, and the same as what I ran on this year. But them other two are customers, um, so he's having a load of bits done on that, so he's wow. brake lines and stuff. But because everything runs ABS nowadays, you have a big ABS pump at the back here, and you've got like 
brake lines running all over. The so this room is purely for engines only. We don't do anything but engines in here. So Dave, who's at the bench, this is his room. So he's got two engine stands. So basically the idea is you put an engine on, he has a trolley, and you can spin the whole engine upside down and everything while it's on there. So we do whatever work he needs to it. It'll generally strip an engine to nothing. If you're doing a refresh, for example, it'll all go on the trolley. He'll order all the parts that he wants, because once he's stripped it, he'll then understand what parts he needs to order. Parts at the minute are a pain, so sometimes it's next day, sometimes it's eight, ten weeks. Really? It's a nightmare. Still be the struggle, then, yeah. Yeah, parts are really, really bad from all suppliers. It's, it's not just one, it's everyone. It's really, really tough. So that's where all your valves sit at the top one. So the pistons that you just saw and the head that you just saw off that BM, yeah. that's the crankcases, they're getting cleaned at the minute. So this is an automated parts washer. So it comes into here first, get rid of any thick real bad grease gets taken off of this first, gets put into here, shut the lid, hit the button, come back in an hour, everything's clean and dry. We've got a blaster as well if we need to blast anything. Uh, and more cleaners here because behind you is also the suspension room, so he uses a lot of this equipment as well for cleaning all the suspension. So this is where all the engines start once they've been stripped. And then in that room, we've got so the class, this is the clean room, and then in here is the dirty room. So we've got a lathe, that's the compressor that runs the whole building. Uh, and Dave does his own hand porting, head skimming, we do everything in here. It's all right, if I show Hudson around. This is Woody. Woody's a, an official OS technician. Hudson won the 110 O'Valley Cup this year. I've been back. Hold on. Hey, mate. Went down to the last race, pretty much. Did it? Last race, just had to stop on, didn't you? That's how we worked out. After Pete's advice, say, I think we changed the slicks on that race two, yeah. was it? Something like that, yeah. And then race three, we put wets on because we thought we were going to rain, it did rain. It did rain, yeah. Obviously, Woody does every, all sorts of suspension, whether it be front forks, steering dampers, shocks, rebuild, service, anything you need. Revalving, revalving, the whole lot, yeah. Does a lot of motocross stuff, don't you, mate? Yeah, probably 70% motocross. Yeah. And then the rest between super motor and road racing. So. If you go to a super motor race or a motocross race, most of the time you'll see that logo on. Yeah. on. So obviously, whole graphics room. So you've got his three printers in there, and then through to the left is a laminated machine. Wow. So we can vehicle wrap as well. So wow. he makes things like this. So it's like this sort of picture on, a, on an acrylic. Oh wow. As well as canvases. Well, you know me, you can print it. You can do it. Yeah, so we've got like we've got a new gear linkage system. Oh, we've well, seen, which, yeah, there's yeah, a new um, which we use. They were all using on the ones that goes onto your chassis. And then it runs a linkage off there, so you actually yeah, got like a, a conventional change in how much it floats and where. Well, okay. it's quite not quite as simple as what everyone thinks, <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bit of trial and error. Mm. Like, there's loads of people having a go at us. Oh, you should be doing this, and you should be doing that. I'm like, do you even know how it works? Mm. <laughs> we've got like a they are leaves. Wow! Oh my gosh! So that is from so the is twenty. Like a tradition. What what what's crazy? Yeah. Is it just like a tradition? Yeah, thing? it's a bit of an old thing, really. Yeah, everyone used to get a laurel. Wow! When you're on the podium. That's oh, what I'm you used to get. Is that what you call it, a laurel? Yeah, call them a laurel. That's from the twenty two race on Super Sport race two. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that was one of the first Evos that came. So that's actually a five speed gearbox. Oh, oh right. Yeah. You, know, you know that one that one ninety twelve inch up there. Yeah. Did that have that gear selector that you said? Yeah. Does it have that on it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just a lot. Yeah. That's all the spare parts from the super stock team that then turn it into a bike. Wow. At the end of the year. And the stocker and the. Um, it's a little bracket of Yeah, it's like. Just a bike. Wild, isn't it? It's not wild. Wild. Super stock. TT bike that I won TT race on, super bike that won the super bike race and the senior race, and that's now Josh Brooks's bike because obviously he's joined the team for oh, 2023, yeah. and then that's my BSB super bike. Yeah. Uh, left hand side here we've got orange, green, and white. Yeah. Green one's really simple. Hold that. That's your pit lane speed limiter. See, okay. it flashes blue yeah, up at yeah, the front. Yeah. It's flashing blue here because the engine's cold. Yeah, yeah. So when you start your engine, that will stay blue and until it gets to a certain temperature then it will go off mm. and then when you hold that button the bike will only ever do 60 kilometers an hour or 38 miles an hour it'll never go any faster 
orange one at the top here, if I press it, a little light comes on. Yeah. So that's to remind me, also there's, it changes it here. It's for engine braking, so we can yeah. change how fast the bike slows down. So we have two different types of maps. Yeah. Um, normally we'd use 10 or 15% more two-stroke towards the end of a race. So as the tire loses grip, the bike obviously wants to go sideways. Yeah. So if you hit that button, it'll pull it into line a little bit more. It just gives it a little bit more two-stroke. Um, the white button is for ignition. So it does the same again. So a white light comes on. Um, normally similar sort of thing. So to, we don't run any traction control in BSB. Yeah. So once the tire starts to go off, we can have maybe a little bit less ignition on the first pickup of the throttle just to try and stop the tire from spinning. Yeah. So we can hit that and it will just calm it down a little bit oh, okay. so we can do that while we're riding we can't change the map while we're riding we can just go between one and two or a and b yeah. uh, on the back there's a button as well which is for a rain light that brings up a yellow light on the front that's fairly pretty much it that's your ignition on off but then there's a kill on off as well so that's now live because yeah. if you press that you have big red lights yeah, up yeah. at the top that's to show that the kill button's on so you press that and it's now live and then if you hit the green button <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Could that be I don't know if it's sponsored by No, it. not sponsored. But Am I getting an invoice after this? Is no. That what <laughs> um, but we're here anyway. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say a couple of questions and um, you should answer. You fire away. Actually, Mini Moto wasn't my first bike, but I grew up around racing. So my dad used to race back in the 70s, uh, race Grand Prix level as well. Yeah. So my dad actually raced at Grand Prix. Well, yeah, like obviously parents are a big part. So my parents, we not, I normally come home from school, get changed there normally, or we pack the caravan the day before. We pack the car and everything, pack the bikes and everything in the caravan. Um, and then as I get home from school, um, my mum or my dad, it depends when they get home, um, they're already moving the caravan off the drive. We're getting our car ready. Um, and then I go, and get changed and then we just kind of do last little bits and bobs and then we set off to the weekend then obviously when we get there we have to set up and um, we've all got his own little jobs I've, I've got a um, couple of jobs like putting legs down on caravan and unpacking some at car and we've got certain areas and everything mum unloading caravan and sorting everything out so we can actually get in it um, and then me and my dad we always take the bikes out so we had to pull the bike up in the middle and take it down caravan and then a garage in the back um, and then obviously we go um, mum always um, cooks tea and stuff which is always really nice and then in the morning we have um, we have some wraps for breakfast every morning and then we obviously go to sessions and stuff put tyre warmers on and it's mostly my dad through the day doing that sort of stuff and then mum taking care of my sister and sorting out caravan and just keeping it nice. I'm super proud of what he's done in biking. It's unbelievable where you think about where it's come. It started really late to, compared to some of the riders that he races with. Like some of these other kids that he races with, they've, they've been on mini motors like four year old, petrol mini motors, racing mini motors, a lot younger than uh, where Hudson started. Um, but yeah, like watching him, obviously you've got a balance of like being unbelievably proud, wanting him to do his best and then unbelievably nervous in the middle of the uh, track watching him. I mean, like it's a, it's a, it's a weighing scale of uh, emotion where you've got like immense proudness, uh, nervousness of watching him race. It's a balance where you're thinking like, I've got him involved in this, I've facilitated this. On the flip side of that, like obviously what's happened this year has been, he never in my wildest dreams would have believed uh, 
he would have won like a championship. I, I never even thought he would have won a race. I never even would have thought he would have podiumed a race when he first started. Ironically, like a strange fact that Hudson knows that on the race that he won the championship on, which it went down to the final round, that is the only race that he's ever raced where he ever come last. Because on that final round of the championship, he had to uh, just nearly pretty much finish that race. So that is the only race on record that he's ever come like last on because he just had to stay on the bike. All the way through from when he first started as a rookie, which it's like a weird stat that he won the championship and that was his only race that he's ever come last on. But he had to just stay on. I mean, like the nervousness of this year, it's been, a, I wouldn't say it's been a stressful year. It's been a good year, obviously, which, watching him winning races, that's always good. He was winning races on his 90 last year. That's always good. Mostly about race weekends I enjoy is like the fact that you've got all your friends there. Like when, when you go to school, like like 10%, like 5% at school know about motorbikes and want to talk about motorbikes with you. But at biking, like everyone's in the same boat. Everyone knows everything. And it's just like your best, like best, best, best friends. And you're just like, it's all nice after after racing and then on track we all have respect for each other no no arguments or anything well currently i'm in the bnb um, run by alan lord um, and i'm currently the championship i'm racing in is the ovale 110 and ovale 140 um, and i think that the bnb is like a good entry point for everyone and like for like let's say the 90s that's like an amazing entry point. That's why we joined it because, like, you could either hire a bike, buy a bike, so cheap. You don't you, like you can just start. You don't need anything, and it's such a good entry point for kids. And then it's got a nice progressive pass up through it, a pro progressive path through it, and it's all nice and organised and everything. So we we decided to join the BNB Championship. Um, it was a kind of an obvious choice on what championships to choose. So Hudson had rode, as we've you've probably touched on, trials bikes. Um, so I chose this SM90 bike because of the trials style that the the that particular bike was, um, and having the supermoto bike, it related to the trials bike in that Hudson had already road that's why we chose that championship and again we went in there we did not know nobody in that championship whatsoever uh, when we went out practicing finding local tracks on this sm90 we come across coincidentally a couple of riders that were actually joining that year as well so when we went into the paddock we knew that they were joining that championship that year as well so there were two other riders so it were ollie ollie and charlie pearson i believe they were called yeah um so Hudson and a few of them other guys, they were all together, really fantastic. And it, it's a good atmosphere. I, like, I believe like in the BNB, it's a really friendly paddock. Like a lot of people, that everybody's always willing to help each other. Um, I'm not saying it's not competitive, but you kind of, especially at the base level, like when they're eight year old, you kind of need that. There's no way, there's no way to know where to start there's no there's no playbook on what to do hopefully there's a playbook being played out now where people are thinking oh we're going to do this we're going to get an old volley bike straight bike straight away where i would say like if you were to do it all again i probably would have bought him a mini gp bike at the beginning right when he were eight year old but you, you don't you don't know that you have to do that it's a, that's an expensive bike to buy the supermoto route is a cheaper route of racing at first. And it's a good entry point. We've only just touched on, on this podcast where we talked about flat tracking, where we think that that's, if we'd have rewound and gone back to flat tracking and knew that that was available, Hudson would have gone flat tracking at six year old and he would have done that right at the beginning of racing. We just didn't know it existed and we would have done that for two years and then raced. He would have been a better rider at the beginning of his 90 championship or first time riding a 90 if it had done a bit of flat tracking for a couple of years, but we didn't know it existed. So 
the B and B, I think it's an amazing thing. We really love that B and B product. There's so many people we know in there now. It's like um, we go away. It's it's fantastic going away on a weekend. All the parents are there. We know everybody there. All the kids know each other. It's like a big holiday camp. Everybody's there in the motorhomes, caravans, stopping in vans, stopping in hotels. It's a good. I think it's a good, really good entry point to racing. Obviously, with these ovalis. Obviously, there's a supermoto entry point as well. It's it's good racing. I believe it's made us and the rider that he is today going through that paddock. There's obviously other championships available, like there's Fab Racing. They race all the way through mini motos. And if we'd have got into it earlier, uh, if we'd have got into it earlier, Fab Racing, we probably would have gone there. We probably would have we would have done that, but we didn't. It was a little bit late for Hudson to get on a mini moto at the age that he started. Some of these kids are racing mini motors from six. He would, he'd already passed that age. My aspirations for next year are like, hopefully we're going to move in, move into the one sixties, and progress up into that and do the FIM um, and stuff like that. Um, but it depends if it's happening or not. But still, that's where we're aiming to go and everything, and then. We're going to do the 140, um, and that's where we're going to be moving up into. My favourite moment in racing was when I think it was at Wilton, yeah, Wilton Mill, um, and it were my first first ever podium, and all way all way at the, through the start of that season, I was getting fourths and getting into third, and then going back into fourth, and I hadn't got a podium, and I think. It was that, yeah, the first podium I, I ever got um, was at Wilton Mill. And like, I think I was battling with um, Daniel Stevenson and we were switching through the race. And then we had Jack Newton in front of me and then Luca, I think, in first. Um, and we were battling all the way through. And then it finally got to like the third race. And I think it went down to it went down to how many races you won because I think me and Daniel were equal equal on points so I were either getting fourth or I were getting third and then it were to who got the yeah who got the highest points all the way through and I got third and Daniel just got fourth behind me and I, I've it's a it were incredible we'll have to put some videos up but like I came into the pits and everyone was cheering, everyone came running up and I started, I like got lifted up and stuff, it was amazing. It felt winning the championship this year was like, it was, because I've never won a championship before, so it was a big moment and like, it was obviously stressful, like probably one of the most stressful championships I've done, um, but it was amazing and as soon as it ended it was just like, taking off a weighted vest and it was just so nice um, and obviously the first championship I've ever won so it was really really good yeah. It meant to me that it was like a bit of a, bit, a big boost of confidence like to say because I've always come third and stuff like that and obviously going back to trials I've ne I never won a trials or anything and to be winning the championship in the UK was like a big thing and it was just obviously really, really good. Our biggest turning point was when we got chosen for the Michael Laverty um, Academy and I felt like that was like a big inspiration for me because like obviously a top racer and we always used to watch him on BT Sport and that and it, it was like, like he phoned us up and told us that he was in the academy, I was just like, mind blown and we heard about the academy and they were doing like test days and stuff like that and we were just like amazed that like it's like it's all right like your dad saying it but then like you see Michael Laverty saying it and like him believing in you and seeing that you've got talent was like a big 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 thing for me um, and like big inspiration. Well obviously we've got all seasons there um, and we've got egg on legs and um, Clinton Woods Boxing, I go I go training there um, and obviously all my sponsors on Patreon, they always 
always supporting me um, and like coming to days and we all have fun at these like secret days and stuff like that. Um, but it's been a big, 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 big help through this year um, with my sponsors and obviously really, 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 really big help. I love racing because it's like, it's just a whole different atmosphere compared to normal life at home and everything. And obviously traveling around the country, it's like a holiday every weekend and it's obviously really nice and you've got all different friends there and they've all been, they all know you really, really good compared to other friends. And it's just really nice to have people supporting you and people understanding that, that what you're going through and people that understand you compared to other people outside of racing like it's a whole 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 different atmosphere and it's obviously really 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 good um, and a good 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 sport people say you don't get a break with racing and it's kind of true um, we're always really busy doing days like this um, and going out on bikes and picking bikes up, working on bikes, gearing, everything. And as a family, we all help each other. And as a, as a team, we all help each other. And it's always really nice to have people behind your back and supporting you. So, yeah, obviously, uh, being a mid-pack rider and then it's weird how um, you go like, you're really proud of watching him just finish a race and then he's getting into the middle of the pack riding. Um, that's really good. And then all of a sudden he's at the front, top three, top five. And then th that's another added stress level of watching him where they're at the front end of, front end of riding. And um, it, it is nerve wracking. Like I always joke about, you can always see my heart rate while we're racing and like you're stood in the middle of the track and you're like at 150 BPM, like watching them race round, probably more agitated or more stressed or definitely more a heart rate than probably what Hudson is racing while I'm basically stood in the middle of the track watching, watching him go around. So it's, it's stressful, but it's also there's like, there's a balance of proudness of watching him do that, like what average kid does that. His school's been like amazing, both schools, um, helping him out, granting him permission to do what he's doing, which which helps a lot. A lot of kids have a lot of hassle with schools. Um, that's a good part of it. Um, and, he's, and he's doing well at school as well. He knows that it's not all just about biking this. Like if he weren't doing very well at school, uh, I'd, be, I'd be very quick to pull the plug on what we're doing here because if, if it were affecting his, his school progress or what he's doing at school, he knows that I'd be, I wouldn't be very happy about that situation. So the plans for next year is that um, Hudson's, he's got options. He could ride in the 110 championship again. He could ride in the 140 championship, mini GP. There's a 160 championship. There's a new starting 190 12 inch uh, championship that you could ride in July, I believe, on that. Again, these are all over the base ones, but um, it's a, there's a lot of options that he's got. And again, we'll go into the season, how like we went into last season, which <laughs> I think like his target last year, I don't know if he like said, oh yeah, just make sure you get more, let's see if you can get more podiums than last year, which was on his 90 bike. That was one of the targets that we had. Like, you got like six podiums, won like three, five races. Can you beat that this year on this mini GP? And I believe that we'll do that again. He's got a 140 bike that he's been riding on and off this year. So next year, probably one of the major focuses is going on that 140. You've got the 160 FIM championship that's a big thing and we're hoping that riders are going to get involved in that and push towards that and get another two UK riders out there to the world finals. Um, I think it's a, there's a lot, there's a lot of options out there and we just carry on. It's each year at a time. 
It's not like some kind of massive playbook where you're thinking, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and then this, and then that. I'm just, we just take it each year at a time. As long as he's enjoying racing, I'm happy. As long as he wants to continue racing, I'll take him racing.